Welcome back. So let's talk about vaccines. Now that Health Canada has given its approval to the AstraZeneca vaccine, there's a lot of confusion about just how effective it actually is. And it's these numbers that people are pointing to. So in its clinical trials, the AstraZeneca vaccine had an efficacy rate of 62%, which seems far lower than the Moderna and Pfizer vaccines, which were both above 90%. So it's tempting to think that one vaccine is far worse than the other. But experts say, first of all, consider that no vaccine is 100% protective. Uh, the very common MMR vaccine for measles, mumps, and rubella, for example, according to the CDC, it is 97% effective against measles, only 88% effective against mumps. So what's the right way to interpret these numbers? And does a lower number mean the vaccine is any less worth getting? Infectious Diseases Specialist Dr. Suman Chakrabarty is here to help us explain. So Dr. Chakrabarty, uh, what do these numbers actually mean? Do, does 60% efficacy for the AstraZeneca vaccine mean that 40% of people who got that vaccine still got COVID? No, and that is a very, very important thing to look at. This is looking more at a comparative ratio almost, kind of comparing the two where you see the risk of not getting the vaccine, and then you look at the risk of COVID getting the vaccine, and then comparing those those uh, numbers to each other. And you can see there's a significant uh, protection in people who have gotten the vaccine, and it's not saying that 40% of people that got the vaccine also got COVID. So that's a very, very important distinction. Right, because the most important part of the protective effect of the AstraZeneca vaccine is as we know it, would be what exactly? So that's the really important aspect. If you look at the people in AstraZeneca who got the vaccine and also got COVID, there was one very important thing. Nobody who got COVID died. Nobody who got COVID got hospitalized. And that's really, really important because death and hospitalization, along with transmission, are three of the most important metrics for COVID in the community. And if you're able to prevent those, that is essentially our ticket out of the pandemic. Right. So, so we have debate, uh, data supporting that notion about the extent of severe illness, which we see or, or don't see when it comes to the AstraZeneca vaccine. Do we know anything about long-term illness? So, so I'm thinking about long haulers. Right? Does the vaccine have any protective effect in that sense? The answer we don't know quite yet, and I think that that uh, data right now is being amassed. Um, and I think one of the big things that we do know is that when you get illness after getting a vaccine, it is often more mild. There are certain changes that are happening behind the scenes, and I suspect that if it is making the disease more mild, it can significantly um, uh, prevent these types of long-term complications. Time will tell, but my hypothesis is that it will help to reduce the the incidence of that. What about how we interpret the the sixty percent efficacy rate? as it pertains to transmission of this coronavirus. So not getting sick from it, but if I get the AstraZeneca vaccine, am I more or less likely to give the coronavirus to someone else compared to someone who got the Pfizer or Moderna vaccines? This data is also uh, really coming together as well. So what we do know from uh, previous observations, even before vaccines, that people who have less severe illness are less likely to transmit the, the uh, virus to others. So, you know, looking at that, the vaccines are doing this and we're starting to get uh, more accumulating data that this is actually the case. That we're getting less virus, uh, you know, in your nasal passages, for example. And this means that you transmit it less. So the evidence is really pointing in that direction. So you have now something that uh, decreases death decreases transmission and, and decreases hospitalization. This is all the big three things that we need to do to get this pandemic in check. This is our ticket out of it. In your mind, that's the bottom line, that if I think I should not take the AstraZeneca vaccine in favor of waiting for a, a more effective one later, you would tell me what? I would tell you that right now, as it stands, I would say to get whichever vaccine is available to you. It's going to do what it needs to do in terms of uh, preventing hospitalization and death. At a later time, we might be able to, when we have a surplus of vaccine, you know, tailor it a bit more. But right now, this is what's going to get us out of the pandemic. We have it in our hands. Now we just need to put it into our arms. Dr. Chakrabarty, thank you for your time. Thanks for having me. Take care.